Welcome to the Sense of Soul podcast. We are your hosts, Shannon and Mandy. Grab your coffee, open your mind, heart, and soul. It's time to awaken. Today we have back with us Scarlet Raven. Scarlet is an intuitive guide, founder of White Fox Medicine, spiritual alchemist, and is a best-selling author. She was here with us last year to talk about her book, Psilocybin Transmissions, and today she joins us again to talk about her newest book, Starseed Ascension Handbook, Blood Type Galaxy Dust. Thank you so very much, Scarlett, for hanging out with us once again. Hey, ladies. Good to see you. You too. How have you been? Good. I'm in Louisiana right now. Currently, I'll be home in a few days, but I'm actually, I'm moving to New Mexico in like 20 days. <laughs> but the last time we had talked to you, you were saying that you were buying some land down there and taking your horses and you were, you were in Castle Rock, right? With your- yeah. So it was basically, I left California in October, sold my house and I've been looking for that spot in New Mexico. It never came up. So I got a lease at this house in Parker to be closer to my family. And then the, the homeowner started spraying Roundup all over the property, which I was like, you know, I'm not going to stay here. So we canceled the lease. And then the perfect property came up in Los Ojos, New Mexico. And I had 45 days to leave this home. And I was like, okay, I'm going to buy that house. So <laughs> I'm really excited. It's everything I wanted. And it was totally worth waiting 10 months, which is like nothing in the long scheme of things. So I'll be like moving and settling into my own home for the first time since I left California. Very Yay. soon. Put your roots in the ground again. Yeah, yeah totally. And it, it doesn't surprise me that, of course, at all, that it worked out perfectly, right? <laughs> yeah. We're excited about your new book, I tell you that much. And <laughs> you're super hot on the front of your new book. <laughs> yeah, <Yes>. naked. <laughs> you're just so naturally beautiful physically, I mean, and obviously, you know, internally. But I love lately the little uh, sexiness you're bringing to your Instagram and to your product and stuff. Thank you, ladies. For noticing that that's been like a naked woman revealing herself has been a relationship I've been building on my whole life and being okay with that, feeling empowered in that and not letting other people's restrictive judgments guide how I want to show myself. So like this cover to me, it's awesome. It's me in bed showing you all of me and like the level of understanding I've come to about a woman who can show herself that transparently, it's leading people into this level of intimacy because it's not about sex. It's not about coming. It's about revealing the erotic in the female and showing how much power shines through that on a soul level and letting that be heard and respected. So for me, this is a movement into rewriting those stories that people have around judging women that want to reveal themselves because we've been shoved into caves for a really long time. And if we want to reveal ourselves naked and demand respect for that, we can fucking do that. (laughs) You know, I freaking love you. Oh, um, (laughs) yeah. When we got your Instagram message and the cover came across, it was instantly moving for me because of the colors something about the colors just kind of captivated me like soft and gentle but sexy and powerful all in one I I don't know and then I see your picture obviously and then the writing on the back and I was like oh my god I can't wait to dive in with Scarlett because I will tell you we love all of our guests but you bring something deeper like really deep that a lot of people don't know about, including us. There's some things like we get to be the student today because there are some things that that we can't wait to be educated on. So thank you for coming back on again. Yeah, thank you for having me. I was so touched by our last hangout around psilocybin. And there was so many people that contacted me that were like, I'm so grateful to hear a mom's experience and like what she went through. And now I have the strength to try it because a lot of people didn't even have the strength to try it. And that interview we did created this portal where a lot of people felt comfortable trying it. So I was so grateful for the space you guys created. A lot of medicine helped a lot of people. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah. 
I wanted to ask you about the name of your book. Of course, Mandy and I have talked about star seeds, you know, here and there. Can we go into the name of your book and kind of discuss Mm -hmm. where you came up with that and why? Yeah. So the naked part was for me to go public with my inner galactic world that's just for me and it's super trippy to share that on videos and social media. I don't have high respect for social media, but it seems to be the platform right now that's available. And I was holding myself back from sharing this information because I challenged with my relationship of fully revealing myself because what's in this book, it's not out anywhere else. You know, like it hasn't been talked about. I have to explain to people my psychic process and light shaping. And I have a very multidimensional world. And I also want it to be tangible for people that don't know about that. So I had so many hangups around like, how do I present this? And it's so out there and, you know, people are going to laugh at me and all this stuff, all those tapes. And when I got to this place of, okay, forget your ego, Scarlett, it's the time to release the medicine. And so I did. So naked was me going through that process, like reveal yourself, be naked, take all your layers off, take all your barriers off. And then star seed is to me, star seeds are on the planet with very specific DNA codes. And there are certain manipulations and perceptions that we will never be, they can't cast certain spells on us, certain spells of forgetfulness. So at certain points in time, each star seed will have an automatic DNA activation that will awaken their awakening meaning they're guaranteed an awakening on the planet at a very specific time to generate the energy for the great awakening. So we're seated on the planet for a very specific purpose. And we all have very specific different gifts and we're all gonna wake up just when we're supposed to wake up so that the war that we're in now, I mean, right now is our jam. We came here for this. Like we came here to speak the truth, to stay in love, to stay in compassion and support the awakening and help pull people out of the matrix and be like, that's a fake hologram. Come over here. You you don't need that. Come here. You know, like, let me hold you. Come here. And just be that light spread out in different places all over the globe for what's happening right now and what has happened because it's always been happening, but we are at a very special precipice that's never been available yet. So that's what a star seed is to me. It's like that person's guaranteed to awaken and they're guaranteed to activate their gifts and then they're going to serve everyone around them, which is what you guys are doing. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> and then blood type galaxy dust is just reminding people how important our blood is and how much power is in our blood and associating our blood with these intergalactic realms is a true state of remembrance. So that's a breakdown of the title. Thank you. Thank you for that. Speaking of blood types, though, when you talk about the blood types in the galaxy, can you go a little bit further with that? Yeah, it's going to be out there, but no, there that's are... fine. We actually had someone reference this not too long ago on one of the episodes. So I want to see if okay. it kind of aligns because I'm sure it does. <laughs> that's awesome. There's many dimensions, but I'll keep it to nine nine dimensions that we are aware of and can live in and transition and the first dimension is the core of the earth the second dimension is the soil and stuff between third dimension is where we live and have our bodies the fourth is the collective the fifth is the heart and it'll keep going the second dimension is filled with beings that actually communicate to our blood and initiate different healings so if someone gets I'm going to say like a cold or they, you know, whatever, let's say you get the flu and you're experiencing the flu. You can actually speak to the second dimensional beings. They will send signals to your blood. And if you can learn the lesson of what's transforming through you, you can transcend the physical symptoms right away, or you may need to finish your physical cycle, but the blood is what communicates to the initiations of healing the physical Is this kind of like a light code activation? You're working with your DNA code and asking other beings, we'll just call them, to kind of upgrade your DNA and whatnot for healing? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Totally. And like I, a lot of them are fairies. A lot of them are kind of worm creatures. There are helpers. They're the ones that have been demonized by this whole pandemic. 
making people afraid of the transformation that goes on inside of your body is it totally ignoring that dimension. And that dimension is the catalyst to you becoming enlightened. The whole symbolism around Corona, Corona is crown. I got it too. I got it in 2019 in South Korea in December <laughs> when this shit, before it hit the US. And I was um, pretty sure I was gonna die, like the pain and, and I couldn't breathe and I couldn't move. I didn't know about the pandemic yet. But what I experienced when they started coming out with this, you know, projection of whatever they were doing, I was like, oh, that describes what I went through because I was in a third world country. I ended up in Sri Lanka and I thought I was going to die. I didn't have access to healthcare, and I couldn't bring any medicine because if you bring stuff there, they'll totally shoot you in the head. So I didn't oh. bring anything. <laughs> I thought you were going to say take it. <laughs> oh, they like no, arrest you for it. life and like execute you if you have weed on you. So I didn't bring oh. anything. I was in so much pain and my fever was so high that I was like, okay, I'm ready. If this is it, this is it. And I let go and I did a full surrender. And I actually went into this like transcendental state and got to see what I was going through from outside of my body. And what was shown to me was my entire, like what you just said, the DNA upgrades, my entire DNA structure was getting a full overhaul and it was activated by Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has so much powerful medicine inside of it. And when my feet touched the ground, I had a contract or whatever to have this awakening in this location. And so my entire trip was this awakening. I didn't really leave my bed, but my whole DNA got an overhaul and then it had to go through my body things have to move through your body. And so when you have a fever and you have symptoms, you're healthy. Your body is showing you that it's transforming something inside of you to say like, oh my God, you have symptoms, something's wrong. No, something is right. And your body is working perfectly. And this whole mentality that the doctors put upon us, it's ass backwards, 100% ass backwards, and it completely removes the spiritual gifts that are to come through physical healing. So Corona means crown. When I went through that and I got home, I still had to stay in bed for like six weeks after I got home. My energy didn't come back right away. And then the thing came public and I realized Corona means crown. Like you get this and you experience it from a physical, spiritual state, you get your crown you become sovereign. Your fear is done. You're done fearing things outside of yourself. It's an initiation into sovereignty and they're making you fear symbolically your initiation into sovereignty via calling it Corona, which is crown, pushing fear upon the crown. So people that are masking up and getting vaccines, they're saying, I am so afraid of my independent sovereignty. I'm gonna listen to this tyrant and pretend that that's better than me walking through the fear of, I hope I get COVID. I hope I enter into this transformation that's gonna to totally upgrade my DNA. Praying for these types of enlightened states to come through totally changes your relationship to this whole situation. How many people have awakened during this period? I mean, oh, yeah. so many, I mean, we've had mm -hmm. so, like every other person. Like, yeah. My yeah. mind is just like, boom, right now, because on a personal level, just changing that perspective, when I get symptoms of things and illnesses, I always like, let it strike fear in me and I panic. And it's that resistance that's probably making it even stronger instead of just embracing it as in, oh, my body is doing exactly what it needs to do right now to talk about a peace of mind. If I would just quit resisting it, embrace it and say, thank you, body. Thank yeah. you for yeah. releasing me symptoms and doing what you're supposed to do. I mean, talk about releasing so much anxiety for me from trauma, from asthma and other things. I love that. And then as far as the crown, I mean, wow, what a crazy experience for you. And, and the fact that you didn't let the fear take over when you were in a completely different country. It's basically what you said. The pain doesn't come from what you're going through. The pain comes from resisting what you're going through. So like, I, I know that and I have known that. And I mean, the only part that really hurt was that I paid so much money to go to this dope ass country and I couldn't see any of it. That was the part that was actually more <laughs> bothersome than my physical journey. Cause I was the physical healing stuff, like what I went through, those are such gifts to me. The time and place of when that one happened was a bummer. 
But there's been times after that where I've been in traumatic accidents and people are like, you should go to the hospital. Your, your leg's probably fractured. And I'm like, okay, well, for tonight, it's not fucking fractured. And I'm going to step into what it means to go through an experience and let my body do its thing without rushing in fear to a hospital and asking someone else to fix me. And I know that I did break part of my leg because there's an actual indention in the bone, but I got trampled by a horse and I crawled into my house and I put my leg up and I had gone through my Corona thing and I have refused to see doctors for years. I've refused to see doctors. And because this whole bullshit was going on, I was like, I'm not going to a hospital. I'm not going around that fear. I'm not going to put myself in that position. So Mm. I put my leg up. I took a bunch of turmeric. I drank like hundred milligrams of THC. I smoked a hash joint. I iced it. I passed out for like five hours. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then I woke up and I couldn't, I couldn't use it. And that's when I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to give myself 24 hours. If I can't bear any weight on it still after another 24 hours, I'll get an x-ray. And so I did the same thing. I basically spent a good amount of the time just resting, consuming high amounts of anti-inflammatories like turmeric and cannabis. Mm -hmm. And then the next day I could tiptoe and I was like, okay, that's it. Now I'm on that journey where I've passed crisis and I'm into healing, but that doesn't, you don't get to experience those superhuman qualities inside yourself unless you give yourself the space to do so. And like, Mm -hmm. we're taught to run to feel that power yeah yeah there's a lot of power in that and now Mm -hmm. I don't I wouldn't go to a doctor if they paid me my concern is Scarlett Mandy tell me if you guys see this I just did some research on some curses and stuff like that and the legitimacy of them because I'm from Louisiana I found this curse that was on you know, this particular place that my ancestors were living in some family members had asked me about it And, you know, it came back to the placebo, which I do believe, and it's a wonderful thing because it just almost proves to everybody that we do have this power within us if we do believe, but you have the opposite effect going on right now, you know, with all the, I mean, if the entire world is in fear of something, right, it's going to manifest to, it's going to materialize, it's going to be real. And in the opposite, we could absolutely just we can control this if people weren't just living in so much fear. I had to cut off all of the news. I came to Louisiana not even knowing that they were having this new corona here. And everyone's talking about it. I'm like, really? Oh, I didn't even know. And my mom's like, yeah, didn't you see the immunizations at the end of the elevator in the airport? I mean, literally right there at the end of the <laughs> And I'm like, wow, no, I'm oblivious to it. It is personal to each person. And I don't think people should be judged one way or the other, to be honest, either. I agree. I, everyone gets to choose their own journey and that's their divine sovereign, right? I fully support whatever everybody else chooses. I fully support as we go from 3d to 5d, like not everyone's going to make it. Some people are going to make choices, which is going to enable them not to make it. That's why people feel so much pressure right now is because we are truly at a precipice. There's a very, very large question everyone is being asked on a soul level. And some people will ignore the question, which means they can't come to the party. But if people can look at themselves and enter into this new state, the vibration on the earth is going to change. Earth is upgrading, which is allowing us to upgrade. People that refuse to go with the upgrade are going to have consequences. There's no judgment on that. For us to judge that situation is our ego. You know, it's not, it's not a soul perspective. And there's no such thing as death. That's a huge fat lie that they've told us. Funerals, huge fat lies that people wear black and cry instead of celebrate the beauty. I mean, there are so many perceptual lies that this tyrannical society has put upon us so subtly that we think it's normal, but they, it fucks up our fear levels. In the end, it feeds our fear levels. So you go to cultures in Africa different tribes in Africa and you watch how they live and they explore their own community and they don't have fear. You won't see the existence of fear. Anything that happens to them is a grateful transformation. They don't shove EMF waves all around them and poison all their food. Like there's people living 
in this state of enlightenment right now on the planet. They've chosen to not live in fear and they've chosen to train their children not to live in fear. And they laugh and celebrate everything no matter what it is. So that's what we're being asked right now. That's the same question we're getting right now. And it's exciting. What do you think you, your purpose, what were you seated for? The way that I can understand it is that it changes as my ascension resonance changes. So like things, if you would have asked me like two months ago, I probably would have said one thing. And now I feel this other thing. And when I get to my property in New Mexico, I think I'm going to feel this other thing. I'm holding a high vibrational light and a, and a soul truth for people. I have my mystery school that I started. That's me being interactive with beings that are ready to ascend and they want support ascending and they want to learn how to be psychic. They want to learn how to heal themselves. They want to learn how to feel empowered, Well, they can join the mystery school and I can support them. So that's felt like one of my roles in the ascension process. And then the white fox medicine, making actual physical herbal remedies with animal symbolism, the whole package really brings you back into remembrance of the power of nature. And it's to me, it's not so much about the medicine anymore, because I don't believe anyone needs something outside of themselves to heal. But it's about the beauty of the packaging. It's about holding the, the heavy glass and about seeing how powerful the animals look on there and then interacting with your body with organic plants having moments in time where you're alone having these relationships back in nature. So mm. those are my, those are my things right now for sure. Yeah. When I was on your Instagram, I saw, I think it was a video. You had your head against one of your horse's heads. And I was very drawn to that. Like, I just wanted to keep looking at it. What is the connection you have with those animals? And do a lot of your healings, downloads come from these horses? Because I feel like there's just such a connection there. Yeah, 100%. So most star seeds are also HSPs, right? Highly sensitive people. I know you guys know about that. But my existence on this planet without my tribe around me, which is my two horses and my three cats, is extremely challenging. We create this net and it's one consciousness and we can all talk to each other and I can hear messages from them from inside the house of like, our water's empty, mom. And I'm like, okay, like I'll be right down. We speak all the time and I know exactly what they need. And then that I serve them, right? I serve them a beautiful life. I serve them organic food. I serve them with healthcare. And then in return, they create these protective really safe realms for me to live inside of while I'm on the planet. That's how I feel that relationship is. Cause even my, like each one of my cats has a different role with me and I serve all of them. And then Baba, he's a medicine cat. So when all this shit roundup started being sprayed on the property and I knew my lease was going to end, I was in a state of like, what the fuck? Like I have to move again. This is my fourth move in 10 months. I'm losing my mind. I'm really tired. I just want my home and I want to feel safe. And I looked at Baba and I was like, Baba, I need to feel the feeling of safety and I need to find my new home tomorrow. I have 45 days. And that night I went to sleep and I had a dream where I was walking on my land and I felt total calmness and I felt held. So, you know, when you have those dreams, you wake up in that emotional state. So I woke up in that emotional state and I was like, hi, thank you, Baba. And then I went on the computer and I started looking and I <laughs> wrote New Mexico because I didn't care where it was. I was like, just somewhere. And the first house that came up was the house that I made an offer on. I literally found it on Monday. I drove out to see it on Tuesday and I put my offer in on Friday. And my closing date was the exact same date that I had to be out of this house. So I mean, it's just like, I have total chills. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the animals do for me. Because I can't, oh, I can't always hold myself like that all the time. They're just so amazing. They're yeah. such amazing souls. That love is so unconditional. It it's is so, so pure. Amazing. Yeah. My cousin has a wolf and he's bringing it over right now because my daughter loves wolves and, and dogs and stuff too. So we're, we're super excited. He's going to be That's here soon. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about the 11 gates. What, mm -hmm. what, what are the 11 gates? Last year, 
when I knew I was leaving California and I was kind of like preparing to sell my house, I had this huge vision and all of these tablets showed up and on each tablet was like ancient writing that my guide would interpret. And I would sit and just channel and go through an experience for myself and a ring of light would show up. And as he read the tablet, it would decode what was inside the ring of light around it, which would describe the energy of the stargate to me. And I could walk through these stargates in my awareness and feel the actual like embodied experience of what that stargate was about. So if the stargate was about empowerment, I could walk through it and completely be embodied in the feeling of empowerment. And then any denser energies that were in any of my systems would come to the surface to be loved and transmuted. And I would get this huge DNA upgrade. So I was going through these experiences and the underlying container of why they were being shown to me was they were like, this is your tool for your mystery school. This is what you're going to be sharing through your mystery school. And my life was like, you know, packing and moving and selling a home and not knowing where I was going. There wasn't the bandwidth to actually do anything with it. So what was interesting was normally visions come and go, but these tablets sat in my awareness the entire time I walked through my life and just waited here until I faced them and started bringing them through for other people. So when I got to Colorado, I only stayed with my parents for a little bit. I never, I just, you just can't do that as an adult. So that didn't last very long. <laughs> and then I went to this Airbnb temporary living space and I started the mystery school and I started channeling these stargates. So there's 11 stargates. They each have their own medicine and they each activate an embodiment of the medicine they're bringing. So people can have all kinds of an experience when they go through these stargates. Like you will feel the emotions that are inside of you that need to be released in order for you to get the DNA upgrade. So you have to raise your resonance to get the upgrade. And if there's a dense climate somewhere, it's going to come to the surface for transmutation. And then once you allow that to move through you and you witness it, then it'll move through, it'll finish its cycle. Then you're going to just, you're going to feel like you're in an elevator and your vibrational frequency is going up and you kind of feel like you're levitating. And some people just experience the levitation right away. They don't need to go through and then every stargate's different. That's kind of like the overall narrative of what this is. And this book is based on me channeling 11 different stargates that each have their own medicine inside of them. Could each stargate maybe one stargate might take you like a day and one might take you like a month kind of thing? Or are Mm -hmm. you honing in and kind of taking your time with each stargate experience that and heal whatever needs to be healed? So there's no really time frame on it. You just got to go through it. Yeah, just got to go through it. And I did put a little section saying how to use this book in here because it's not like a book that you're going to plow through and read. You're going to get activated from it. So there's, you know, if you feel super activated and you want to chill and not pick it back up for six weeks until you've integrated the upgrade, then that's what you need to do. So this isn't just like some magic pill you take, boom, you're upgraded. This book that you're holding in your hand is going to be an experience and it's going to be work and it's going to be emotional and it's something that you need to commit to. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's with everything however much you put into something and however strongly you commit to something, that's the amount of magic you're going to get back. I watch a lot of people in our culture get washed or like diluted in their commitment energy. There's so much being offered and all the apps and all the swiping, it allows people to live in this very surface realm of non-commitment because there's always going to be 200 things after that one thing, if I don't like that one thing, but the magic and the luck that's totally real and activated by DNA is only activated through intense commitment and through full, full engagement, you know, fully being present with things. So if you enter into reading this book like that, you're going to get so much more out of it than if someone picks it up and is like, oh yeah, cool. So many fun things. Wow. So however you engage with it is going to be what you get back. Basically. (laughs) Is it one of those books where I've heard this from other people They're like, this book is really a higher level book when it comes to spirituality, or is it like you said, 
you were trying to put it in a language that all could understand. How do you think it ended up? Yeah, I think it's for everybody. There are light language codes behind each word. And this is what trips me out about social media platforms. People correct my spelling and grammar all the time. And they don't realize that I'm actually sharing light languages behind what I'm sharing. And things have to look different in order for other things to come through. If you're constantly following the language paradigm of Webster's Dictionary and how your English school teacher told you how to write, you're going to stay in that mental framework. We're upgrading everything and we're changing everything. And I'm not going to spell everything correctly on purpose. I'm not going to use the correct grammar on purpose. There's, there's no grammar mistakes in this book. I know I'm going to get emails from people and they're going to be like, oh, you spelled this like this. And I'm like, okay, well, there's a language behind that that you're blocking because you're so focused on the box of Webster's dictionary right now. So allow mm-hmm. yourself to realize that everything you've learned before is everything you've learned before. What I'm offering here is something totally fucking different. It's totally fucking different. This book is speaking directly to your subconscious mind, whether you understand it or not. If you don't understand it, seeds will be planted in your field. If you do understand it, kind of like when you have a series of aha moments and you feel upgraded, that's what this will bring. I just had this like message that, that it's also not a book that you just pick up one time. This is a book that the divine will always meet you where you're at. So they're not going to just throw you into some realm while you're like, what the fuck? And you're stuck like up in your crown. It's going to, and tell me, tell me if I'm wrong, but it's going to meet you where you're at and slowly, gently help you ascend to where you need to be. And then you might need to pick it up and do it again. Is that right? Yeah, totally. hundred percent. So I love books like that too. Those are the most powerful books. Those are the books they help you grow in its own time. And I love that. I love that. We have like a crazy storm going on right now. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, (laughs) like last week they flooded here. So hopefully it won't be that bad. Get on a boat. Earth is cleansing just like we are right now. (laughs) Louisiana. I mean, they have rain. We have snow. I mean, everybody has something. Mandy was just talking about this earlier, how the pollution is so bad. You know, there is a lot going on with the earth. Can you speak on that? Because I know that you, you do your due diligence for the earth. What's going on? The fires, you know, the severe yeah. weather. I would love to encourage everyone to start speaking to the earth directly and realizing that it's a sentient being that we can all communicate with and stop going to social media and web platforms for information about what's up with the earth. So what I do is like, I speak to the moon or whatever. I speak to the earth and the energy of the earth. And when you do that, you start feeling her and you realize we can't affect her. Yeah. We've created some pollution, but if you think that we're having that big of an impact on this large of a magnificent soul, your ego is totally tricking you. And this is the whole climate crisis, the whole, that whole push what is it doing? It's feeding fear. It's a bunch of tyrannical lies here to take money from you, to take rights from you, and to keep you in a state of fear and powerlessness over your external environment. And what the earth is saying is, hey, don't, don't you like need an enema sometimes? Hey, like, don't you like go into a sauna sometimes? Hey, like, don't you go play in a river sometimes for cleansing? Like, hey, don't you change your diet once in a while? Like, why are you treating me like I'm this helpless thing that you can affect? When in truth, I am going through the exact same evolutionary cycles that you are, and you're refusing to look at it. Your humans are looking at it like there's a problem that we're doing. And it's like, all of this is egotistical, tyrannical, implanted lies. So what the earth says to me is that we are an extension of her. She's going through an upgrade. That means denser energies are coming to the surface all of the floods and everything else is coming to the surface. It's bringing stuff out. You know what, Scarlett? So how does someone like me not live in fear? So like with Denver having such high pollution right now and me having such lung issues, where would you suggest someone like me takes myself or what kind of practices can I do? Or how can I speak to mother earth? Is it just in prayer meditation? What would you suggest for someone like me who's allowing it to control me because of fear? I'm worried about my asthma and my physical symptoms. So 
you know, you're having your own unique physical experience and asthma and breathing issues is a thing. So your body is telling you something, Hey, I, I need really fresh air. I want to feel very clear. And then you are physically in an environment that is not offering you the true healing environment that your body's requesting. So I guess I look at this stuff, which is why I left California. I look at this stuff like, it's not about what can I take so that I can make it through this experience. Where am I supposed to be? So I'm in my highest power. So what I say to people like you is like, find some clean air and live there, girl. Like you are not tied anywhere. You can make all your own decisions. That's so crazy. Cause last night I spent an hour um, researching like states that have the cleanest air and places. I've always surrounded myself with everything that I'm allergic to. I'm allergic to pine trees. I'm allergic pretty much everything in Colorado. Like the places that I'm not allergic to are beaches and sand and palm trees and the ocean. And I'm like, why am I denying what I know my body needs and where my soul is happiest? And it's yeah. always the attachment, the attachment mm-hmm. to, to home, attachment to family. But the reality is I'm home. So mm-hmm. thank you for that. Yeah, girl. I can totally see you living in that environment with your swimsuit and your feet in the sand. And it's not a small thing to move. It's not a small thing to put yourself in a brand new environment. I mean, I, it was very traumatic for me to do what I did and leave California with as many animals as I have and move an entire company by myself and then do it three more times after that. But what you remember when you go through those experiences is you actually can do anything. You can literally do anything. And to forget that is just forgetting that. Well, and I think that what's really profound that you were able to still connect with downloads and channeling and spiritually, even though you weren't completely grounded and you've moved four times in 10 months, that you were still able to write this book, get this book out and do (laughs) your purpose during the chaos of the storm. You didn't let your circumstances control you. Like what an amazing experience for you. Yeah. Thank, you know what? Hearing you say that actually shows me a lot more of my magic. So thank you for saying that. You are magic. You stairs. That's Thanks. crazy. When you, yeah. Isn't it funny how when someone springs to your attention, you're like, holy shit, I did all that. That's oh that is amazing. <laughs> you're I'm, fucking awesome. <laughs> you're like, I knew I was a fucking badass, but now I'm going to time that by 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you feel yeah. like time is so weird, right? When you're going through so many mm-hmm. things. I want to go back to what Mandy was saying about, you know, fear and living in fear because she, I feel like so much of us, this is like the lowest vibration that us humans have. It seriously is what mind fucks us. Mm-hmm. It's what holds us back. Mm-hmm. It's what's living in our muscles. I mean, it's just truly fear is just a motherfucker. And then here's the thing is that we teach this fear through generations. This is my problem. So now you have it, Mm -hmm. right? Or this is what I fear. So you should fear it. I've really, really tried not to do that and spread that through generations and allow people to have their own experiences about what they're going to fear, especially my children. So that way it just doesn't keep going one generation after the next, after the next. And you break that DNA, you do change that code. Mm -hmm. For the future. You actually have power. I mean, you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're the exact same as Jesus Christ. There's no difference between that person's cultivated abilities for miracle healings and whatever else we put onto that symbol. That is, that's our divine right. I mean, that Christ consciousness is what's being born out of this great awakening. And a lot of us that are holding the space with mystery schools and we get together my primary state of being is I feel very calm and I feel very held. And that's not something I would say I've ever felt before. And my external situation has been the most intense and traumatic that it's ever been. So I'm at like the peak of pressure in my life where I was going through a massive transition with tons of animals in a company and I felt held and guided just a really large sense of inner peace, the entire situation, which is probably why I was still creating because I know in every single cell of my body, I am the creator of my experience. It's not just about giving our power away to tyrannical lying politicians. We give our power away to our emotions. We give our power away to parts of our experience that we're generating and we allow it to steer 
our abilities. The whole thing about upgrading DNA is about expanding your conscious awareness. When you expand your conscious awareness, those instances where you are giving your power away become less and less because you can see them for what they are instead of being swept away by the emotion of it. And that's like a huge difference. It's like a certain level of awareness that when you get to it, you never go back. You never slip and forget that again. Like you're at this level of unity consciousness where you can see it's all connected. I mean, the universe couldn't have been louder with serving me second by second signs the entire time I was in this 10 month transition. And even my family was like, how are you still standing after all this? Because it wasn't even just the move, but like my partner separated with me two weeks before I left. So then there was this other aspect of that emotional heart stuff. And I was like, well, even though I'm having this wide variety of intense emotional experiences, there's a core part of me that's always going to be settled and resting in a state of unity consciousness. I'm never going to forget that. I'm just sitting here like reflecting on like the last six months of my life because I had a lot of circumstances that put me into a complete like I was not still standing. I was curled up in a ball on the floor. And looking back, I will say that my stillness and my practices that keep me grounded were not being utilized. Like I became a slave to time a new job, a new schedule, new calendars, splitting custody of children. And it was actually extremely terrifying to see how fast time and circumstances took me back down to my knees. I did still feel the unity and I still felt held, but I also felt like maybe I was taken back to the darkness to remind me that it was somewhere I never wanted to go again, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm still processing it all. Um, but you're, you're right. It, it was very interesting how I had to go back out into this worldly realm and start waitressing again and doing things that went against where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. And I let it just consume me and take me back. Yeah. It was fucking horrible. So power to you. What were some things that you did during this to help you stay grounded? And just, just to give you guys like a totally transparent container I was a fucking emotional mess, like huge. I, my, my partner back in California, it turned out like he basically lied and manipulated me for 10 months, but I couldn't see it until six months post breakup. So there were some big things that were being revealed to me and I'm very emotional. I'm super sensitive. So my emotions are extremely intense. (laughs) Like I take them to the most intense place, but what I taught myself is when the emotion gets activated, it's a density inside of me. It has nothing to do with my ex-partner and has nothing to do with the move. It's a density inside of my body that is coming up to be seen and loved. And then when it finishes its cycle, it'll be done. So I view those situations from that place. I don't view them as like something bad's happening to me. I have to get through this. I'm like, okay, great. Thank you x person for awakening these denser energies in my body that doesn't mean my ego isn't going off saying Fuck it, do, do, you know doing that stuff but i can watch it there's parts of me that are really fiery and really out there and very emotional that hasn't changed just because i remember my unity consciousness like all of those things that are a part of me are still always going on i respond to them differently In my younger years, I used to let them overtake me. I wouldn't get out of bed for 10 days. I wouldn't eat food. I would go through the most extreme moments. I mean, my parents went through so much shit because I would let my emotions steer my entire life. And it gave me the motivation to figure out how to not let my emotions steer my entire life. So I basically spent 10 years studying how to train my mind and studying how to become the watcher in unity consciousness I made a goal to do that. Every action I took was about strengthening that gift inside of me. And now I get to live in that place of, I'm still crazy Scarlet. I'm still going through all this shit, but I can literally sit and watch it. And if, if I'm at a place where I'm too filled with emotion and someone wants to come over, I'm like, you can't come over because I will probably go off on you on something you didn't do because I am a fucking time bomb right now, but I'm aware that I'm a time bomb. 
I'm aware mm -hmm. that I need to isolate until this finishes cycling, right? I don't vomit my shit on other people. I don't project my pain and call it someone else's. I contain myself and I go through it. So those are like the practices I use all the time. And you get to this place where one day you, you don't have to practice anymore. You're just in the state. Yeah. Do you feel like a lot of the resistance for people is that as this is flowing up and as the emotions are trying to kind of run their course, we try to control it? Yeah. Do I don't that. want this. I don't want to feel that. I, I want this. And yeah. Do you feel like that's what it is? So you can basically find everything you just said. You can find it because it'll rest in the vibrational quality of duality. If something is resting in duality, you're being taken away by the moment. You are in the emotion of the moment and you're struggling. It's interesting that she brought up resistance because the one thing I thought of with your book is you have to really surrender before you flip open that first page. A lot of people have been programmed to be afraid to even become better, or get be their best higher self or to ascend to the next level. So you would really need to surrender and, and not have that resistance and be completely just open as you read through this book. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And that yeah. to me is like, the recommendation of do that with everything. If mm -hmm. you bring your past with you into your future, you're kind of fucking yourself from the start. So make a conscious effort to enter in something. And one of the stargates is just for that. Okay. It's to, it's to give you the experience of eyes of a child because children don't do that. Children will walk into any situation with just curious anticipation. They don't okay. know what's coming, but they're excited. They're not judging, they're not projecting. So that is Stargate number seven, innocence, embodiment, freedom from fear. Mm, perfect, love it. <laughs> Tell us what a couple of the other ones are. <laughs> Stargate number four, abundance, magnetism, moon gifts, implant. Stargate number nine is innovation and self-trust. Stargate number five is sexual blooming, earth and star channels. Stargate number 11, which is the last Stargate, is mastery. Create your own Stargates. Ooh, and then, I love yeah, right. I want people to read this book and then when they're ready to leave it behind and start creating their own world. And then after every chapter, there's a bunch of blank pages. So people can write in their own anchor for what they experienced. And then as they read it again, they can watch themselves transition further and further through. Were you surprised that it landed on the number 11? And what does that number mean to you? 11s are stargates themselves, basically into mastery. That's what they mean to me. So 11, 11 is a recognition of I'm on the pathway to ascended mastery. So the book costs 11, 11, $11, 11 cents. And there's 11 stargates. Numbers, I mean, when I got to a certain level of my psychic abilities, the field around us, it's, it's all numbers. It's crazy. You can actually start learning how to read the numbers. Like the movie, The Matrix, that's not actually fake. That's a part of our unseen territory around us. So there's layers of these numbers and codes that have these divine geometric symbols that connect to everything and have these felt concepts. You know, I, I have a connection with 22. I talk about it all the time, but I have been seeing 22s like I, I cannot believe it around <laughs> here. I'm like, everywhere I go, I'm like, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so tomorrow I'm going to the Myrtles Plantation, which oh. is, you know, one of the most haunted places in our country. It's also known as a vortex. I'm super wow. excited to go. I don't have any ancestral connection to that plantation and Unfortunately, here I go again. I keep on going to plantations I don't have ancestors with. And, and there's so many I could go to <laughs> and have amazing tours, but I haven't gone to them. But I'm super excited to see Myrtles. But of course, you know, I look it up, it's 222 years old. I mean, it just is <laughs> always got the twos, girl. It's so amazing. Yeah. I was looking at this, um, I think I sent it to you, Shanna. The speed of light is like 2,099,000. 0.792458 or some shit and the coordinates of the great pyramid are exactly that as well like it's there's wow. so yeah. many mm -hmm. it's always there's just, 432 hertz you know there's always like some sort of 
mm-hmm. you know, connection. Yeah. And I hate math, y'all. I freaking hate it. I mean, but it is a different kind of math. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's no nonsense math. It's much better and easier to read. <laughs> Purposeful. <Yeah. laughs> Carly, yeah. you know, you know that I'm a fan of your product. I would love for you to just talk for a moment about what new products you've come out with. We saw that there's like a stargaze tea. That self-love mm. scrub looks so amazing. I, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting online and getting that. <laughs> it's amazing. It is amazing. This new one, I actually invented it when I was living at my parents' house for two months. And it has, I'm going to read you the ingredients. Super, super simple ingredients, raw cacao beans, coconut oil, cocoa butter, vanilla beans, MCT oil. There's a rose court infusion and I basically blend it all up and it becomes this wild starseed love cream. You can put it on topically as a body butter kind of a cream. You can eat it. It tastes like chocolate goodness. And when you put it on topically, it's amazing. You basically smell like chocolate. Like you will, your whole essence will smell like chocolate. And in the old factory, like smelling realms, when you smell chocolate, love starts coming out of your heart. So there's an actual medicine quality to smelling chocolate. So this cream, like, yes, it's great for your skin, but you're also going to feel like you're enveloping yourself in like a love cocoon. And Um, it sounds like I need some of that. And like your, your partner could really enjoy it on your body yeah. too <laughs> causes oxytocin you know to mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. that's amazing yeah. and it's like chocolate if you people do bulletproof coffee where they'll add oil to their coffee you can add a <laughs> teaspoon of this and you'll have like a mocha coffee i add this to my sheila g so you can absorb the benefits from sheila g you can just add it to hot water and have a hot cocoa this stuff is amazing it's oh my god It literally sells like crazy because there's so many uses. And for me, like at night, I'll put some on my hands and I'll rub my breasts and I'll rub my womb and I'll kind of get into this state where I'm away from electronics. I'm coming into bed and I get really cozy with myself right before I fall asleep. This has probably been a really good big medicine for me through this transition was like self-touch and Mm -hmm. the smell of chocolate. Um, boom. I mean, those two things right there are magic. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love that. And you know, something is extremely like pure. If you can not only put it on your body, but also eat it. I mean, hello, how many products out there can you find that you can do both of those? Um, when you said at first that you had made it while you're living with your parents, I was thinking in my mind, if I made something while I was living with my parents, it would probably be named like how to keep me fucking sane while I live with my parents. <laughs> you know what, girl? Like I was in such a survival mode that, I mean, it was not a good environment from the start. From the second I opened my U-Haul, like wrong foot, right? And I was like, yeah. oh shit, what did I do? Like, why didn't I think of this? Why She's did like, I- how the fuck did I end up in Parker, Colorado? <laughs> I mean, girl, when I signed this year lease, I was like, okay, I have a year here. I'm going to start networking. I'm going to start talking to people. I went to a couple of like healing spaces where they do massage and sell products. Literally, they all looked at me like I was an alien. Like none of them knew what I was talking about. And I started getting this feeling of like, I have no connection to Parker, Colorado. I have no connection to Colorado. Like my soul always wanted New Mexico. And this was the whole internal process I went through right before the lease got canceled. So it worked out perfectly, but yeah, no, this place isn't my jam. Well, guess what? The good news is, is that you aren't going to hold resentment towards Parker because you're going to look back and be like, I finished this badass book while I was living in Parker's. <laughs> it served some sort of weird purpose for you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious. What is your connection with New Mexico? I don't, I won't know it till I get there. Like what happened was four years ago, I started feeling called to move to New Mexico and the, it was like a soul mission. And it came up and I felt it and I was like, okay, I'm interested in New Mexico. And then when I had time off, I would road trip out to New Mexico and visit and hang out. It's such a high elevation and the desert spirits are so alive. The stars are so seen and the population is so spread out that 
you really can feel your sense of spirit there. And then the land always activates this sense of home inside of me. I'm really excited to get there. I know that the land and I, the land that I'm going to live on, we've had mm -hmm. lifetimes before. Like I know a lot of stuff is going to come up. I know a lot of stuff is going to be healed. I know a lot of yeah. stuff is going to be created. I don't think I'm going to live there forever, but it's definitely my next chapter. I love it. Well, the best right. of luck to you. Yeah. Thank you. Scarlett, where can our listeners find you? Where can they learn more about your mystery school? Where can they get this book? Give us the mm -hmm. goods. You can buy it from my medicine website, which is whitefoxnectars.com. It's also available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all those other massive retailers. And the mystery school, it's called Naked Starseed. If you go to my medicine website, you'll see a tab on the mystery school. So you can get to it from there, but you can also go to nakedstarseed.com and that'll give you the link. And Patreon is basically, it's a subscription based platform. So if you want to join the mystery school, you can join for five bucks a month and then you get access to all of the Stargates, all of the support for me and the whole light community. There's opportunities to pay 35 bucks a month. It'll depend on what you want to get out of it. And then you, you can leave after a month or you can leave after two months, but it allows you to put yourself into a community where you get to experience what a mystery school is. And to me, what that means is that all this stuff that I'm channeling and bringing in, it's ancient. It's not new. We have forgotten. We are the most devolved culture that's ever been on this planet. So the really evolved cultures were living in Egypt and all those times. And the stuff that I'm channeling and bringing back is from that time period. So there's kind of like a circle here. And I'm just here to remind you. That's why a lot of people are attracted to it is they feel like, yeah, this is what I should be doing. I should be upgrading myself. I'm supposed to be finding my soul's purpose because they feel that connection to a higher truth. So that's what it's about. Interesting. And a lot of people are probably going to be attracted to it because they probably already lived in that era. And, and this mm -hmm. is a knowing that from the beginning of time. So it's kind of just like, almost like you're, you channeled it as a, a reminder and into words that people can understand today. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that because as you start ascending and having expanded consciousness, you'll start seeing yourself in these other dimensions or past lives or parallel happenings. And you can see where you were and you can see what you did and you can merge, you can merge timelines. You can, that will activate the awakening of gifts. There's all kinds of stuff you can do when you expand your consciousness. It's really, it's pretty out there. It's cool. And now it's time for break that shit down. Bravery, bravery and asking yourself on a soul level, what do I really believe in? And what do I really stand for? And what is my pathway to fully embodying that like a intergalactic badass, this energy that's moving through me, that's encouraging me to make these videos talking about what's going on with the government. It's from that place of, I can see that everyone is this intergalactic badass and they've just forgotten what they stand for. So what do you stand for? What do you give a shit about? Can you drop your phone long enough to actually embody that experience? Scarlett, just like the first time you have been an absolute pleasure. We just adore you and everything about who you are and <laughs> we wish you the best in New Mexico. And, you know, I think it was probably a blessing in disguise that you didn't meet anyone you connected with in Parker. Know, right now you're not. You have no attachment here. So it's probably, even though it sucks that we didn't meet you and we're only like 15 yeah. minutes away from you, it's probably good because Shan and I would have made you want to stay here because we're so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's true, dude. The, the universe like closed every door for me here. They made it so easy. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to have you, Scarlett. We can't wait to have you on the next time. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really love you, ladies. If you love Scarlett as much as we do, you can go to Sense of Soul Patreon and you can get the extended version, 30 more minutes of Scarlett right now. So go to Sense of Soul Patreon right now and sign up. Thanks for being with us today. We hope you will come back next week. If you like what you hear, don't forget to rate, like, and subscribe. Thank you. We rise to lift you up. Thanks for listening.